I'm special. Very, very special. <laughs> we know you're special. Wanna make that paper? Wanna make that dough? This is the affiliate marketing show. Wanna make that paper? Wanna make that dough? What is up, everybody? Today, the podcast intro is brought to you by Google Bard, the newest AI chatbot technology. I prompted it with the following. Create a podcast intro that includes the following points. Welcome to the Affiliate Marketing Show, hosted by Josh Sebo, Adam Young, and Harrison Gewurz, special guest, Anna Gita of MaxWeb. Please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Here's what Google Bard gave me. Welcome to the Affiliate Marketing Show, the podcast for anyone who wants to learn more about the world of affiliate marketing. In this episode, your hosts, Josh Sebo, Adam Young, and Harrison Gewurz, Gewurz are joined by special guest, Anna Gita of MaxWeb. Anna is a seasoned affiliate marketer with over 10 years of experience, and she's here to share her insights on everything from choosing the right affiliate programs to optimizing your campaigns for maximum results. In this episode, we'll be discussing what is affiliate marketing? How does affiliate marketing work? What are the benefits of affiliate marketing and how to choose the right affiliate programs, how to optimize your affiliate campaigns and much more. So whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned pro, the affiliate marketing show is the podcast for you. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks for listening. You know, I was kind of afraid to share that because now I think Adam and Harrison are actually considering replacing me with a AI chat bot. Well, that was pretty good, we get Adam. To firing you, Josh. I would like to ask you a question. How much did Google Bard pay us to sponsor the show? Because you said they sponsored the show. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. That was wishful, wishful thinking. I'm still working on it, waiting for a reply, but I'm, I'm still hopeful that they're going to get back to me. Uh, Anna. Okay, so no sponsorship. There was no sponsorship. There was no sponsorship. You should, sorry. you should bleep sorry. that out on editing. Get your own <laughs> legal like advice. Google free shit. We should bleep get that your out. Own, get your own legal <laughs> advice. You know, Anna, I'm going to get your thoughts on this AI chatbot stuff because I know you're pretty big into it, but I actually took it a step further. And I actually asked Google Bard, who is Anna Gita? Would you like me to share what it came back with? God, no. I mean, it's yeah. pretty dope. No, it's pretty good. Anna oh. Gita is the CEO of MaxWeb, an affiliate network that connects advertisers with publishers. She has over 10 years of experience in the affiliate marketing industry and is a well-known figure in the affiliate marketing community. She is a frequent speaker at industry events and has been featured in publications such as Forbes, Entrepreneur, and The Wall Street Journal. In addition to her work at MaxWeb, Anna is also a co-founder of the Affiliate Marketing Israel Association. She is a passionate advocate for the affiliate marketing industry and is always looking for ways to help affiliates succeed. Anna is highly skilled and experienced affiliate marketer and is a valuable asset to the MaxWeb team. She is a strong leader and is always looking for ways to improve the company. She is also a great communicator and is always willing to help others. Is all of that correct, Anna? It is, but that's why I, I said no, because I hate it when people spend so much time talking about themselves. As a person that has done so many speaking gigs and so many podcasts, I'm telling you the worst is when you start a podcast, you, start, you get comfortable in, in your seat at a conference and the speaker goes on for 20 minutes about their background. So thank you. That was great. Uh, the people can look me up later. You know what I mean? It's it's just. Well, for the real intro, me and Anna go way back. She's one of my best friends in the industry. We always make it a point to catch up when we see each other on the trade show floors. Anna, I really appreciate you staying up late over in Romania, if I'm not incorrect. And we love to have you on the show here. Um, so to piggyback off of the AI chatbot stuff we finished with last week, like I said, I know you're super passionate about it and you have some opinions on it. So what are your thoughts on Google Bard, ChatGPT, and its place in the affiliate marketing industry just real fast? I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you asked because I, it, it's been a talk peak that I'm just, I get so geeked out and excited to talk uh, about. And in the last few months, my team and I came up with ways to use it more on a day-to-day -day basis, especially ChatGPT. We figured out a bunch of different ways to integrate it in our day-to-day uh, -day work. So obviously, I'm a fan. It's a great tool. Um, it will not replace jobs. I mean, to an extent, it might, like a virtual assistant or easy jobs like that. But it's a great complementary tool. 
So for example, uh, and I, I'm a huge fan of examples when, when I give specifics, when I speak, uh, a great example is on the MaxWeb team, we have some high IQ, brilliant individuals that happen to be introverts. So they use ChatGPT, like before they send an email, they, they go to ChatGPT and say, can you please make this email more bubbly? And that has been a game changer because most people that are very having a high, high IQ, they're knowledgeable, they don't know how to make fluff. They don't know how to make the email sound diplomatic and kind and whatnot. So that has been a game changer yeah. for us. Just having the, the possibility to make the emails more bubbly, it was fantastic. So we use it on the day. As, as somebody who's introverted due to low IQ, I'm going to start trying this out. This, this just sounds pretty good. It's generally so good. And I know people don't even think about that because, you know, they want to make money and they want to tell ChatGPT, here's, uh, I have a hundred bucks, how do I make money, right? Well, obviously that's fun and interesting, but there are easy, very easy ways to incorporate it in your day-to-day -day life. And for junior affiliate managers, and I'm sure we have a bunch of junior affiliate managers listening, it's a great tool if you don't know an answer. So we had a junior affiliate manager that had, she she's new, obviously. So she wasn't sure what it means, like middle, bottom, top of the funnel marketing. She wasn't sure what's the differentiation, like an affiliate was trying to use an offer with like bottom funnel marketing. And she was like, what's that? And I was like, well, let's ask chat GPT. And the answers were so spot on and so simplistic. They did, the chat did an easier, a better job than myself because I probably overcomplicate terms because for me it's common sense. Yeah, you know, I I asked Adam a question once and he responded with a screen grab video of him typing my question into Google. And I was like, okay, Adam, see you there, buddy. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> well, I mean, same, I did do. Same. <laughs> Well, you know, I am a man who loves to take everything one step further. So I actually have two other prompts and you guys can tell me if you want to hear them. One was, how would I go about replacing Josh Sebo, the host of the affiliate marketing show with an AI <laughs> chat bot for all future episodes moving forward? We that do was not one. need to know the answer to that. We already know the answer to okay. that. Okay. The other one was write a short story about Harrison Gewurz and his superhuman strength. Let's pass on the okay, uh, cool. chat chat prompts here. I'm really curious. So Anna, you've been in affiliate marketing a really long time, just like us. But you know, my my business has evolved to the call side. Obviously, we make software now, and I've been out of the traffic game and the affiliate game for for a long time. And so I'm really curious. Um, like, what what are some of the most interesting offers that you guys are working on right now? And like you, I really like to go deep. So instead of just telling me like, yeah, we have this co-reg offer, like walk me through one of your most interesting offers right now and how it actually works. Like wh what does it do for the advertiser? How are they monetizing the traffic? Like let's unpack a really cool affiliate campaign. I would love to. So it's, it's an easy uh, question for us because we actually have uh, a small niche uh, you know how affiliate networks can focus on legion gambling casino neutra well we have a small niche that's called vsls video sales letters and it's not that small because it's a very very profitable industry so when i started i saw the need in the marketplace for a network that focuses on vsls and we went on to create them because that's the next step obvious step because we don't want to rebroker stuff so we create vsls so let me give you a specific example the offers that work let's take usually it's stuff that baby boomers would buy and what i mean by that it's a uh, vision back pain nerve, diabetes, any health issues you can think of, um, we usually focus on those. Weight loss is okay too, but not as much as the health stuff. So when I say VSLs, a video sales letter, think about 40 minutes of a small like film telling you a story. 
we are big on stories and our copywriters usually have taken extensive courses, like a good copywriting course is like 40, 50 K a year to know how to really, really sell. And the VSLs usually start, starts with a scary story. Like this person almost died because they weren't taking good care of themselves. Right. The, the, the offers are usually scary and intense and that's okay because in our industry, we always tend to put, offers in the black and white category, like black hat or white hat. And it doesn't have to be like that. That's the big trick of why the offers we create work, because I figured we can be very aggressive with our offers if we are very nice to our customers. So on the customer service side, if a customer calls, we want to make sure someone picks up within seconds. And if they want their money back, give them the money back right away. So that allows us to be very aggressive with the offers, have the crazy stories in the VSLs, like this person almost died because their diabetes was out of control. They weren't taking care of themselves. And then we usually have a doctor, we call it, you know, an authority figure. The doctor is a big part of the offers that comes in. And we work with real doctors in the US. So they come in, they tell you a few tips and tricks. Um, and the supplements actually work. Obviously, none of them work if you don't exercise and if you don't sleep and don't take care of yourself. But it's stuff that actually, you know, it's a good complementary to your diet and whatnot. So it's usually the the story, because you wanted me to walk you guys through it, is the story with the big headline. Um, then you have an authority figure that tells you what to do. And then it's always a supplement that you can take for, you know, one, six months or whatnot. And it's easy to monetize because offers like that convert very well on native, on YouTube, on Facebook, on GDN. So we kind of create them with the affiliate in mind. We create them knowing that they're going to convert well. Because in, in health, I've been seeing like the type of offers that run and it's very hard for them to convert without silly tactics of incentives, of lying to the customers, adding recurring, you know, charges and whatnot. So I've seen it all. <laughs> I've, uh, you know, I've been approached and because we have a good reputation now, all the advertisers in all the industries want to work with us. But we kind of stay away from other niches because it's we really like uh, again i'm saying be very aggressive with your marketing that's what our industry is all about but you can do that while still being nice to your customers and making sure that you never lie to and you know set their expectations right so i have a couple of questions about that and i really love the vsl model um because it allows you to take a commodity product that everyone else is selling and like you said they may be selling it using incentive traffic or fake celebrity landing pages or just lying to the customer because they need to compete for the ad dollar. So what you do instead is create um, a really engaging story. And like you said, it's almost like a movie. Like a, I've seen a ton of these for all, all sorts of they, industries. It's and amazing how really long amazing. those videos are, videos are, but the quality is incredible. Yeah, yeah in fact, Harrison and I uh, first learned about this when we were in Bangkok. I mean, we knew about we knew about these types <laughs> oh, of offers, but we first really learned about them when we met our friend Brandon um, at the Centara Grand at Affiliate World Asia. I think it was 2017, and we had rented the uh, penthouse at the W in Bangkok, and it came with this big movie theater screen. And Brandon came over. And was like, yeah, guys, I run VSLs. And we didn't know anything about these things. And so he just popped on a bunch of his offers, which were for, they're not, I don't think they're the ones you do, but he does like survival offers. And so like finding, you know, crazy. We watched hours of videos, which was only hours. like two offer, two <laughs> offers of videos. But it was long. like, and I was like, people buy this? And then we watched it. And I was like, I was about to buy it so that I understood. Yeah, I was ready to go. Take my money. And what I loved about it is it was the same product that a lot of affiliates were running with really shitty advertising to consumers. But when it was framed with the VSL, sure, like you said, the story can be aggressive. If it's survivalism, it can talk about the end of the world and, you know... Okay. Yeah, like surviving when other people can't. But you're not lying to the consumer. You're still selling them the food package with the shovel and the, you know, the medical kit. It's the same product, but you don't have to lie. You're just putting this amazing story 
in front exactly. of it. So I, I think that's awesome. Do you run yeah. these Are you guys only in the U.S.? Yeah, go ahead. Or do you run in multiple countries or so what type we of started? We running? started with U.S. only, and that's a great question because we have so many affiliates out of the U.S. And obviously, even if the affiliates out of the U.S., they started with U.S. traffic only, just because Americans are prone to buy more stuff like that. However, the last couple of years, it switched. So it's U.S. is still probably our number one traffic source like most of the customers are probably from the US but there's a huge market now in Canada, New Zealand, the UK. We usually target English speaking countries because it's easier to get, you know, our point across in English. But now we sell most of the campaigns we can make them international and everyone will see, you know, a smaller percentage from Europe or South America, Asia. So slowly I think we're going to go um international in the sense of you know not just having 50 percent or more in the us so that's exciting are you localizing the accents of the english-speaking countries like obviously i'm american right and you have your accent which is european and uk like are you redoing all the audio for all your vsls for the countries we don't we don't it's that would be so expensive i mean one of a good vsl can take you close to 30k like just the video aspect and on top of that that's and that's a big reason like i tell our secrets openly all the time and the one the number one reason people don't copy what we do is because it requires a lot of hard work and in our industry people love to do stuff in an easy way and that's not a bad thing right just like work smart not hard <laughs> so it, it, it takes a lot of hard work to create a vsl because you have a million moving pieces and then it's very expensive so it's it's hard to put up fifty thousand dollars aside when i got started that felt like an impossible amount to invest in one offer right so uh, obviously now i know it makes sense because the return on investment is beautiful you get a good converting offer it's so easy for an affiliate to send constantly 300 sales every day just on one traffic source. So the big secret behind VSLs is that, you know, it's they are harder to create because they're expensive and you need to be very careful with the quality of the video. You can just put a PowerPoint and, you know, a um, voiceover and expect it to convert very well. So, I, I have seen a bad VSL and it put me to sleep. It's actually how I fall asleep at night. I just watch bad ones. <laughs> You just watch for yourself. <laughs> yes. you so yourself. you're not doing you're not doing any uh, webinar style is what you're talking about uh, with a PowerPoint and voiceover. No, no, we don't. We don't. It's just like the film. The that's the easiest way to explain it. And even with our affiliate creative, so we obviously have over twenty thousand affiliates now, but we also run traffic in house. And even with our creatives, like if we're gonna create a short two minute video on YouTube and that short video is gonna take you to VSL, but still you need to get their attention. We invest time and efforts, even in that short video to make sure it's like great quality and you know, same for a good pre-sell on native, um, but it works. It converts beautifully and it's very profitable. Do you find that your affiliates are making their own creative or do they really rely on your video creative and sort of just act as like outsourced media buyers? Good affiliates always make their own creatives because they don't they don't trust anyone else and it's kind of their superpower. Uh, like I've seen our YouTube affiliates and they get exclusivity per channels because otherwise people come and steal their creatives. They mm -hmm. always have to create their own. Uh, my job is to make sure the VSL is really good. So by the time the customer gets to the VSL, it's my job to sell them on whatever we're, we're selling. So the affiliates usually create their own, except email swipes. Email swipes, we create those because it doesn't matter if you use the same email swipe for different lists. But for mm -hmm. YouTube, Facebook native, affiliates always prefer to create their own stuff. Now, are you doing all your own fulfillment after the VSL or are you kind of acting like an intermediary where you go to another company and then you're like, listen, I'm going to make this VL VSL manage the affiliate program? Is is that because you and I have never spoken before, so I actually fully understand your business. That's why I'm asking these questions because I, I love it. it. And you'd be surprised how many people don't and they never ask questions because they 
it's 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 great it's great stuff so we always work with a fulfillment house my motto is don't do something if you're not an expert and there are so many brilliant people in the industry why not outsource it so we work with fulfillment houses like uh ship offers and jetpack they're wonderful they're in the us they ship everywhere so we, they take care of all the fulfillment side for us it's the way to go. Same with the mids. I mean, we'll have our own mids for specific offers, but then we'll work with platforms that uh, do payment processing, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, ClickBank or Buy Goods or Digistore. There are so many payment processing platforms, and it's smart to use them because you mitigate the risk. I mean, if you go to the banks and get your own mids, it's it's good for some offers, but you mitigate the risk if you go and use different payment processors. Those those offers that we were watching in Bangkok were were ClickBank offers, and that was the first time that I I it was like a light bulb moment because I realized not only do those offers get traffic because I thought they didn't if I'm honest they get a lot of traffic it was like a a really like a, an eye opening moment in you know a pretty long career of the industry. Oh, we use ClickBank. We use ClickBank for a lot of our offers. We love them. We're good partners. That's why. How do you see the conversion rate variation between when you control your checkout pages and use your own mids versus their checkout pages? And the reason why I say that is because they have a very Windows 95-esque look to them. Yeah, the and they, they've been doing that. a better job in the recent years. So yes, it doesn't always convert as good as our own checkout pages, but sometimes it converts better. So we always like to test. And then we also, some of the offers are on buy goods, which they do the same thing as ClickBank, but they also offer PayPal, which for some customers, it's very easy and intuitive to use. So we always- It's a test. reassuring to the customer, yeah. Exactly. So what do we do? We split test. We, we see which payment processor is better, and then we go with that. But sometimes, even if it converts less, when you use a platform like ClickBank, it's worth it because they take your risk with chargebacks and whatnot. So even if sure. it converts like 0.5% less, you end up making more money because you don't have to worry about your risk with chargebacks and commits. Do you that get a lot sense. of affiliates by working with uh, ClickBank or these third-party hosted payment processors? Like, do they drive you uh, or promote your offer to their ecosystem? Well, they our offers, like we're behind a lot of the offers that VSLs offer in the industry. A lot of people don't actually know that we own them and we're behind them. So mm -hmm. whoever is listening, yes, that's us. If there's a good VSL, we're probably behind it. Many times affiliates think the offer is like some owner and ClickBank. They don't even know it's ours. And it doesn't matter because even if they don't run directly to MaxWeb, we still make money on the back end. So uh, we probably have affiliates that come from the ClickBank because of our reputation. And now, you know, our affiliates know that we they get really high CPAs or they know that we offer May goods. We're, we're big on that. Like if an affiliate has a big bad day, we always give them like, I don't know, a thousand dollars because you had a bad day. And we do stuff like that all the time because I have a business background. So honestly, it's word of mouth. And now with our reputation, affiliates just come and they want to work with us. So if we have a big party and we sponsor with ClickBank and, you know, ship offers, let's say, because we do that all the time, we always refer affiliates to each other. So it's that abundance mindset. I don't care if one of our affiliates goes to ClickBank and they promote an offer that's not ours because if that affiliate ends up making more money, he's going to have more money to spend on the offers that we end up creating. We and always I, share. I want to go back to the Windows 95-esque point that Harrison brought up. Do you have any thoughts on uh, like what the psychology is behind that? Why some like crappy looking checkout pages tend to perform better than the you know finely tuned refined ones? Well, in that case, I honestly don't think they intended it to not look as great. Um, I mean, I have so many friends at ClickBank and they are a great company. Um, they also have a board of shareholders that they report to. So in order to make specific changes, they need to follow that, you know, hierarchy. So sometimes it's harder for them to make changes overall because every change has to be approved so it takes longer to be in line with what's hot right now so i don't think they actually intended it to look older it just took a bit longer to optimize everything but now if you go and you look at a checkout page i think they look awesome and better and uh 
Yeah, no shade, no shade at ClickBank. I wasn't even talking about Gosh. ClickBank specifically. And, just and, uh, and well, I think what you mean. A lot of the offers they look not just the checkout. The the offers themselves, it's something that you wouldn't buy. Like that was a big lesson for us. Just because we wouldn't buy something like that, split past it because chances are. God knows what huge percentage of customers are going to find it very appealing. So the the rule is don't don't assume just because we think it looks odd that customers won't purchase. So just split test. You would be surprised, Josh. Like just changing the color of like you know you have the video and then the headline, and just changing the color on the back of the video can sometimes increase conversion rates to a silly high number or changing the headline. That's huge. Just the right headline on top of the video that can change everything, make an offer a winner or a loser. And when you make those changes, do you actually do any research as to why they are performing better? Like do people just like a blue background and, and like you go down that rabbit hole of why the numbers are what they are? Or are you just like, I don't care. I like that they're buying more stuff. So that's all that matters. Exactly. We learned a long time ago. I mean, obviously with certain things, we know what's going to work, but many times it's just, okay, this is what seems to work. Let's stick to it. It's uh, people have tried so many times to like resonate as to why some stuff converts better than the others. And it's really hard to like pinpoint it because sometimes it's a change so small that you wouldn't even think about it. And Josh, you know, what's interesting about what she just said, and I love it, is the the real affiliate mindset that Anna has. And what I mean by that is I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs, especially in incubators or angel investment scenarios, where they fall in love with their design. They fall in love with their website. They fall in love with what they're building. And the reality is it doesn't matter why it works or it doesn't work or whatever. All that matters is, is it profitable when you buy media to it? And so one of the biggest hurdles that I see for people outside of our industry that don't really understand this is that the market decides what it wants and you have to appeal to what the market wants. And so if that means a blue background, great. I don't think we'll ever explain why. I don't think it even matters, right? Like blue or pink, oh, blue worked, great. Like it it really, um, it really doesn't matter. And a great example of this is uh, what Google did back in the day with their link color in their search results. And so they tested every single shade of blue effectively to figure out the hex code that resulted in the most clicks. And I don't think Google or their AI cared either which shade of blue it was. But the reality is you just need to split test until you figure out what gets the best result and never, ever, ever fall in love with the creative or the offer or the landing page or the business model or anything. It, it needs to be user driven and market driven. And the idea is to fail as many times as you possibly can um, to figure out which one converts the best. You're either uh, winning or learning. Um, it's not really failure. And I think a lot of people struggle with that process because they feel like, oh, it didn't work or, oh, I spent money and lost money or, oh, I, I, I thought this was the winner. Um, and I, I think that's something that's really cool about Finding our more things to test to eliminate the losers is probably the best thing you can do, even though it's definitely painful 99% of the time. But when you find that 1%, you've, you've struck gold. Absolutely. I agree completely. How many times do you guys edit the VSLs before you find the winner typically? Oh my gosh, it depends. So we also have great partners that create offers just for us. So we're very lucky. So we create, a, we have you know our own company. So we create a bunch of offers like uh, Herpesil and Diabacore and stuff like that. And then we have vendors in the space that create offers just for MaxWeb. And they have to deal with all that, like triple checking what stuff works and why they don't, like typical vendors, right? For us, we kind of have our team of copywriters and dev guys that uh, over the years, they created um, a really safe phase where we create a bunch of offers and then we see what works, if that makes sense. We don't spend a lot of time analyzing everything because it's really counterintuitive. So Anna, talk about seeing what works, right? I know I see you at every conference I'm at 
but that is just a small fraction of the conferences that you attend during the year. So I want to know why does MaxWeb and Anna Gita go to so many conferences during the year? Which conferences do work for you? And what are the key metrics from those conferences that make you say like, yeah, this is worth attending? Because I mean, I don't want to say you go to every single conference, but I feel like you're hitting, <laughs> you're hitting multiple a month, most months, I would say. I mean, just from the outside perspective, maybe that's incorrect. Maybe it looks more than it is. But can you talk to us a little bit about your mindset on conferences and your presence for MaxWeb at the shows? Absolutely. So last year I did 13 conferences in 11 months. So yes, there were a couple of months where I did more than one and it's exhausting because I'm, I, I, we relocated back to Romania. I'm a very proud American citizen. So my company is based in the U S but I'm now physically in Romania most of the year. So it gets exhausting flying, especially to the West coast. But a few years ago, I learned how important it is to be physically, physically in the same room with affiliates and product owners and industry friends. And most importantly, I learned how good it is for any business to have someone. It, it just happens to be me uh, that I'm the face of the company. I would love to hire someone like a good VP or director that enjoys doing this. I haven't yet. But when I do any of the speaking gigs or any of the you know big conferences, it just creates so much good publicity for the network. So I, I remember after the first conference, I think it was Barcelona, like four or five years ago when Affiliate World invited me to speak. And, you know, that's a, a big event. And I was nervous because I'm honestly, it's not my favorite thing to do. I am so good at the boring, geeky stuff, like financials and like business stuff. So I, that this is what I'm good at. So long story short, I was like, okay, let's do it. I went on and I spoke and I added Max up to every single slide. And we got so many affiliates that signed up after that presentation because they realized we know what we're talking about because I was speaking about native ads, I think. And we got a bunch of affiliates that sign up. And then the most, the more I was doing shows, I realized more and more affiliates sign up because they like to meet us and they get a personal vibe that they and they know they will we will always pay them and take good care of them. So I wish it wasn't as good for business because I do not want to be traveling as much as I do. And slowly, you know, the team can handle more and more shows. But if you do have the money to invest in conferences, it's probably one of the best ways to really, really grow your business. I think it's so important that you go to the conference. I know you're talking about potentially outsourcing it, but, you know, I feel the same way about this. I go to all the conferences and it's a slog. My wife gives me a lot of hell over it. But at the end of the day, I get to meet the customers face to face. We get to talk about what's going on in the industry and we get to build really strong partnerships. And um, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of my bigger competitors and bigger companies in the space that that we we fight with, their CEOs haven't been to these conferences in years. And mm -hmm. I see that as a huge detriment to their business. So props to you for that. Now, I have a question for you. So while I was sitting here listening, I checked out your LinkedIn and we're not connected. So I sent you a connect connection request. But I have to know, how did you go from the office manager at Country Meadows Retirement Communities to the CEO of MaxWeb that makes wow. hardcore video landing pages? Like, where the hell did that come from? You know, I've been I've been waiting for people to ask me more about my background because I think it's pretty darn impressive that I used to like. And if you look before that, like I used to work for, for a behavioral health clinic, which was a different type of hospital in Pennsylvania. And then I used to run like in Los Angeles, a department and they used to make baby bedding, like very different from what we do right now. It's a very different background. And that's a huge testimony as to what I mean by this is a pro like a very profitable industry. And I I really mean it, like people say this for show, but when I say with no previous experience in affiliate marketing, I really mean it, right? When, when you see that as my description, 
what happened? I met um, someone in the space in the industry and we had like this beautiful brainstorming session. And the as I was listening to him speak, uh, he owns a bunch of different companies. One of them does payment processing, another does customer service. And I have uh, a degree in marketing, not just the business one. And as I was listening, I was like, what? Affiliate marketing? What I do? That's great. And I was like thinking of ways where you can make a lot of money with it. So that was it. That was the, the small opening when I, I, I met Mike and he was telling me about it. And then I started helping him with a product. Uh, I mean, with his company for, I think, a year or two. And then I saw the need for a network like MaxWeb where, where you actually, you know, focus on affiliates. And I, I, I just studied everything I could for a year and a half until I officially, you know, we gave Maxim the name that it has now. And I'm still learning. Like, Adam, I you say I have a lot of experience. I feel like I'm learning every single day, like every day. I'll have an affiliate that tells me about their GDN campaigns. And I would feel frustrated because I don't know a lot about GDN and I'll spend like two, three hours just learning enough. So I feel like I can have decent input when I talk to them about it. So my biggest quality, I'm definitely not smarter than the people in the room. I'm really not. I have an average IQ, but I'm relentless. Like I will work 20 hours a day and learn as much as I can. So yeah, it's possible. I used Hell to work. yeah. Behavioral health like clinics that. and hospitals and yeah, it's you can do it, guys. If if I can do it, you can do it too. I gotta ask you a selfish question, Anna. Have you ever tried to run a VSL, whether long form or short form, to generate an a consumer initiated inbound phone call? I haven't. I haven't. And I have many good friends in the industry that have businesses similar to yours. And I've always been fascinated by it. And I always say, Hmm, maybe we should do some paper call. Like, you know, that would be good with our, and I, I'm thinking about it. It's just been so busy, right? We haven't, but we should chat more offline or. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you, I'll send you some stuff. Cause I haven't seen anyone do what you do to generate an inbound call. And that doesn't mean it doesn't work because TV is such a huge driver of inbound call volume that it would be crazy to think that like you guys wouldn't crush it. Like we have people who use our technology to do TV that'll hit millions of dollars a day. We have people that use our technology to run YouTube campaigns. Uh, many, 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 many people that'll do uh, five and six figure uh, volume days just off of YouTube videos. So um, I just feel like I just feel like you guys have this insane talent and it, it might actually work in my space. And I'd say that because I just see the opportunity. Like, I don't I'm not going to pitch you. Obviously you should re use Ringba. All right, fine. I'll pitch you. But the, the reality is um, I, I think uh, you and your team might be able to create some awesome campaigns and offers in the call space using, um, using what you do with video, because I think video is so powerful and a lot of affiliates don't know how to create it. They don't have the production capability. Um, but when you get it, man, does it go. Has yeah. has Maxweb Maxweb always focused on VSLs, or was there an, another period in time where you guys focused on other types of offers? Uh, yes and no. I mean, we've been always just profitable with VSLs. When we started, we tried digital products more. I want to say for like six months because you know the ClickBank offers that used to be just digital. You would have an ebook that you would open up that would teach you how to lose weight or whatnot. So we tried those and those were profitable, but not as profitable as VSLs. Like not enough money for you to grow business, pay everyone and still have your investments in the bank. And again, I have a business background and I know a lot of people in our space talk about making millions overnight. And I always roll my eyes because if you made a million dollars, but in your bank, you have 10 bucks left after you paid everything, you didn't really mm -hmm. make a million dollars, if you know what I mean. So VSLs are more profitable. We still have great digital offers that work, like Back to Life. It's a back pain offer. Beautiful. It works great. It's a VSL though. It's a VSL that takes you to a digital offer, not a supplement, right? So it's still the VSL like behind the digital offers that work well right now. Do you do Makes any sense. VSLs to hard goods or is it all like supplement or uh, digital? 
Like, are you selling like the crazy survivalist stuff? Are you selling 5,000 pounds of rice? <laughs> we have some survival offers. We have some survival offers, but they're kind of like, um, I don't know, like a drone that you would use in the woods, or I think I want to say knives, uh, stuff like that. That's what we call them survival or like Trump offers. I've noticed there were like a few, like the Trump coins things that people would buy so we we put those under survival i don't know if it's politically correct but hey I'm, i we do that and then beauty beauty has been great but still a bsl so uh, a year ago a good friend of mine uh created a skin cream and i was like well i can help you but you need to make a bsl for it so he did make a bsl and now south beach is one of the best offers on the market so that's a testimony that we started being great with health, but we can bring traffic to pretty much anything if the VSL is good. So tell me how tell me how a skincare VSL works because I understand your other ones, which are fear based marketing. Like that makes a lot of sense to me. But how do you approach like the emotional aspect of a skincare offer for a VSL? And second question is. Are those skincare VSLs of similar length? Like, are they running 30 to 45 minutes? Or walk me through a skincare VSL. So it depends, because now after South Beach did so well, other product owners came and created other uh, beauty offers that work well. And also a great niche in our space has been uh, gum health and teeth, anything that has to do with like, having good, beautiful smiles. And that was something that a couple of years ago, no one would thought that it can be so profitable. So with beauty, the angle, like the copywriting story, it's similar to weight loss, where you want to make the person buying feel better about themselves. So you go with a story where you're not comfortable in your own skin, you, you know, you feel aged and, you know, for weight loss, you would use terms like overweight. Um, for um, beauty creams, it would be like wrinkles and you look aged. Someone confused you with, uh, you know, the the grandma of the kid, but you're his mom. Something like that, yeah. right? So it's, it's uh, basically saying we know you want to look prettier and feel better and uh, having you no know, wrinkles will probably make you feel great. And people always like judge VSL so harshly, but I always say this, I am a woman over 30. So I always get uh, targeted on Facebook by Yves Saint Laurent and Vichy. And they kind of say the same thing, like use our Vichy night cream and you'll have no wrinkles in two weeks. It, they're really saying the same thing that we're saying in VSLs. Uh, we're probably more aggressive with the headlines, but we are definitely nicer than they are when it comes to returning money back if the customers don't enjoy the product after a month, you know, so. And you that. mentioned you mentioned a good VSL can cost anywhere upwards of 30 grand, I think you said. Um, so I don't know like how much you're comfortable sharing, but what's like a typical return on a VSL? Like, are you comfortable making these investments in VSLs? Because even a bad VSL is going to be returning that and then some, whereas a good VSL is obviously like through the roof. Or maybe before you answer that question, let's start with this one because I like it a lot. Uh, how many VSLs do you make that just completely fail and you get you have to throw away the investment? Well, now, because we have so many vendors creating offers for us, we don't create as many offers as we used to, because uh, if a vendor comes and they create offers just for us, it's pretty much the same as us owning them. Because my idea when we started creating offers was for uh, to not read broker stuff, because we want our affiliates to just have the offers. So long story short, probably more than half of whatever you're going to be creating is going to fail. And I'm so glad that you asked, Josh, because I have seen many affiliates that are very good at driving traffic, deciding, well, why am I promoting other people's offers? I can just go and create a VSL. And I have yeah. not yet seen a, an affiliate be successful with it because it's a superpower that's very different from running traffic. So technically, I think it's easy to create a VSL because... That's all we do all the time, right? But I've seen people try to duplicate or create VSLs and they're not very good at it. I've seen many people do that. So 
it's i would say chances are if you only have money to create one vsls oh i it can be a winner the way jeff was you know my friend will had a winner with his one try at a beauty offer but you know those are exceptions most people that create vsls are you know but but they don't all have to be that expensive let me like clarify that you can create a vsl with two thousand dollars and chances are you can make some money depending what you want to do. I have so much respect for people that just want to take home $10,000 at the end of the month for their family. That's still a lot of money. That's still great, right? Not everyone wants to make, you know, 500K in profits every day. It's it's a different threshold. So it really, really depends on how much you want to work and how invested you are. You need to research every single VSL on the market to make sure you pick the right ones. The The ones that I'm referring to, the ones where you make 500 sales constantly every day. And when you make 500 sales constantly, you already know that, think of it like this, you're an affiliate, you run, you run Facebook traffic. If you constantly make 500 sales every day, you're taking home like 80K in one day. That's a crazy amount of money, right? So in order to create an offer that converts that well, it has to be spectacular. Those are the exceptions though. Like not all offers are gonna perform that well. So I would say probably more than half of VSLs, they don't work or they work, but the owners expect to have 30 sales a day. And they're happy with those 30 sales a day, right? Because with 30 sales a day, you can probably pay your account manager and your customer service representative and you're set, you're good. I remember a few years ago, I think it was actually at Bangkok, uh, at AWA, I went to like one of the speakers and they essentially said, and, and what you just said about everyone thinking it's easy to do, to, you know, build yeah. VSL, this reminded me of it. They were telling people to go to Fiverr to build VSLs. And I remember, yeah. and I've built zero VSLs, so I'm not an expert here, but I remember thinking, I don't know about that. That sounds a little bit not realistic i know i know and we can open that's that we can open the story of the gurus in our space because you're going to have half of the people that are decent and they work hard and they're going to have knowledge that's actually awesome and then you're going to have i call them kids and it has nothing to do with age that just tell you to go do a b and c and you're going to make a bunch of money overnight and that's just absolute bs because it really doesn't work like that it is easy to make money in our industry, but there's you really do have to work hard. I have not seen a way around it yet. <laughs> Anna, do you guys hire a, like do you outsource the production? You bring in a, produ a production company for these VSLs or do you guys have your own in-house production team because it's what you focus on and you kind of save money that way by having your own people doing it? So for some of the offers, we have our own team that does that all the time. And then for other offers, we outsource it. And I know the product owners that create offers for us, they outsource source, uh, the video production as well. There are like four or five people in our space that everyone goes to. They are great like uh, video editors. And those are the people that everyone uses. And anyone, if you want to want those names or those introductions, I'll be more than happy to help you anytime. Cool. So we got about eight minutes left. It's almost 10 p.m. in Romania, and I know we have a hard cut off with you. So <laughs> I do want to ask you one more question that I think would be super valuable to our viewers and listeners, and it has to do with your affiliates and publishers. You know, MaxWeb is a force within the space. You guys are one of the biggest networks. You're one of the most recognizable figures, I would say, in the industry. So specifically, what is MaxWeb and what do you do to keep your affiliates and publishers happy and continue to create that growth of the network that you have going? I love that question, Josh. And I have seen, especially the last uh, few months, I have seen vendors post stuff like this online. It would be like a screenshot of an affiliate asking something and the vendors would be like, oh my gosh, this affiliates, they always expect us to do all the work for them. And then you have so many vendors who think, they, you know, affiliates should just be happy because they're allowed to run these beautiful VSLs that they created. So I don't know why, Josh, I have no idea why people just behave like that. The big secret of why we have so many good affiliates is because we really care that they make money and we really care about making sure we're very nice, very kind, very prompt. 
that's the huge secret. Like every affiliate that's on MaxUp, they get a uh, dedicated account manager. So when you log in, you see the picture, the Skype, the email of your account manager. You can reach out to them, ask them a million questions, and they're not going to act like you're a bother to them. So that's a big reason why, like, we are just present. And also we're very kind. And I know it's not cool or sexy to say that because acting like a shark is how, you know, people get street cred in our space, but we're very kind. I mean, we're nice and we're patient and that goes a long way because most people and especially super affiliates that spend a lot of their money and their time actually feel very respected when you, you, you talk to them at a level of patience and kindness. So that's a huge reason why. And also we offer a lot of make goods. So at the end of the day, and I keep saying this, I don't have a marketing background. I have a business background. And if you make people money, they're going to continue working with you. So you have this fantastic affiliate. He runs traffic every day to you. And even if you have a technical issue, or even if you don't, if you have a crappy day, don't tell the affiliate, well, that's the risk of running traffic. Sorry, you lost $5,000. It's just a risk. No, we always offer a make good. And I think we're the only network that does that. We set aside a bunch of money every month where if affiliates have bad days, and obviously we know the people that actually, you know, deserve that, which is most of our affiliates. We offer a make good. We give them testing budgets. We send them nice stuff for their families. We take them to conferences. So invest the money you make. I mean, we really reinvest most of the money we make on the network to make sure that affiliates are happy. So that's the big secret. And I, I share it all the time, but no one seems to do it. <laughs> Do you think uh, MaxWeb Academy has anything to do with your affiliates and publishers being happy too? Is education and educating those within your network a big part of it too? I really hope so. I really hope so because we, even the blogs that I write, it takes me forever to find like the good content. And I put so much love into those, even doing the podcast or the speeches and, or the case studies with like super affiliates that we put on the Academy. We put so much work behind those. So I hope with all my heart that it has a reason uh, to do with why they're happy uh, because knowledge is important. And when I started, it was very hard to find actual information. There are many very charismatic speakers and it's a pleasure to hear them speak. But at the end of the speech, many times you're like, okay, but what do I do? How do I actually make the money, right? So the idea is actually give them tips that actually work, you know, and I think most affiliates really appreciate that. And is that just a free resource that you offer for anyone within the network or is it an add-on that they have to pay for? No, it's definitely free. It's definitely free. I know other networks have academies that they have to pay for. All MaxWeb affiliates have free access to the academy. You do have to be an affiliate, and it's not the easiest uh, to get on the on the network. Or with MaxWeb, you usually have to have like a reference or two, someone to get you in. But once you're in, you you have access to everything for free. Adam and Harrison, do you guys have any final thoughts or questions for Anna before we let her get out of here and pass I, out? I was just curious how many team members MaxWeb has. Well, including accounting, dev, and HR, which have been very important the last year on our growth, uh, we are close to 28 now. Just, we're not a big team. Awesome. I mean, That's we. Cool. I, you could say it's a big team, but in our space, I have seen people make huge numbers with a team of three people, right? So we do have, I think, 14 account managers, which are, you know, the most important, making sure that they deal with affiliates. And then uh, the dev team is also important and accounting to make sure that we get paid and affiliates get paid like clockwork, you know? Of course. Anna, you're such a good guest. I love having you on these shows. You're uh, very knowledgeable. You make our job super easy. And I would love to have you back sometime in the future later this year. Um, thank you again for coming on. We really appreciate it. Anything for you, Josh. Nowadays, I'm very careful with my time and I say no a lot, but I would never say no to you. You were so nice to me before Maxwell was even anyone in this space. So I always remember the, the good actual Oh, well, thanks. I can only say the same for you. Thanks again for coming on the show. For Josh from OfferVault.com, 
Adam Young, the CEO and founder of Ringba, your number one paper call tracking platform. Harrison Gewurz, the industry legend, and Anna Gita, the CEO of MaxWeb. Let's make that paper. Let's make that dough. This was the Affiliate Marketing Show. We will see you next week.